Welcome to the first episode of The Guide Life. So this is gonna be something I do a couple times a week. If you don't know me, my name is Jaden. I run a company, it's called Northwest Outfitters. And uh, right now it's the middle of winter. So I have my ice shacks out on Lake of the Woods out of Kenora, Ontario, and we're running full steam. So I was thinking about the best way to keep posting videos while I'm still busy like this. And I think the best way to do it without having much friction is to just wear a camera all the time. So you're gonna be able to come with me while I'm you know, moving castles, checking groups in, checking groups out, um, plowing ice roads, changing propane gas, uh, working on generators, the whole the whole thing. There, there's so much that goes on in a day. And I come to situations where I wish I was wearing a camera, but I'm not. So now I'm gonna try to wear a camera as much as I can while I'm out here at work. And uh, we'll try to do it throughout the whole year too, not just the winter. And you guys can see exactly what the guide life is like up on Lake of the Woods in Canada. So I'm gonna put a camera on my head and I'll put a camera on the truck and we're gonna go to work and, and we'll see what happens. So stay tuned. How's it going? Good, good morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. I got some. Inside right now. Oh yes? Cool. Yeah. Hey, there you are. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's Canadian too, so I don't know if that's like what, 50 cents American, something like that? 50 cents American, I perfect. got, we, we square there, I can get yep. more no, that's for perfect. delivery service. Yeah, look what do you got on? Lake, right? I'm just hanging out, man. Well, come on. See, yeah, this is why I'm wearing a camera right now. It's because shit like this happens all the time. Yeah. And I never catch it on camera. Oh, yeah, he's been on this for a minute. Cool. All right, well, do you mind if I hang out for a sec? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. absolutely. Yeah. I'm trying. There's places lit with lake trout. We've hit, we caught four. We've, hooked five, we've lost one of them, but we got landed four. Each one in the 30s. Come on. Yeah. That's awesome. It's been sweet. The Lakers. We've gotten a couple big bites, too. Yeah. So. This morning. Yeah. yeah. Got a couple of big fights this morning too. Got one big one this morning. Got one this yeah. morning, one oh, yesterday, one yesterday morning. morning. Sick. Just jigging. And then Walleye City. Yeah. 46 and a half is our, is our big one. Yeah. We got that yeah. within the first hour. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Right out of that set. This hole is hot. I don't know what is what you did with this one but as opposed to all the other ones with that one right there. Yeah, I, I put some, some magic dust in there. Big girls. <laughs> you always catch a big girl in the kitchen. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. One perch in the castle, and I think John got one out of his other shame. Other than that, all, all the there. there. Shallow. Give you a saw here though today. I'm yeah. uh, I'm gonna just do a quick like video or whatever. There's another. Anything that you find that's virgin is where all the perch are. Oh, okay. So like any little rock bump or edge of a point or, or anything, it's just gonna be loaded up with perch until you roll up to it and catch them all. Basically, you'll still have them rolling through as you go. But it's a lot more sporadic than they just yeah. navigate an area and that's kind of where they're gonna be. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Hey, man. Instantly cuts my visibility off and I walk <laughs> away, and then half hour later, Shane will follow me back to the next one with his backslide. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me out of that, Shane. <laughs> where did, where did you get them from? Why don't they do wax worms and stuff? Yeah, we don't. That's terrible. Never. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's bad, I know. Ooh. Yeah, you can't get them anywhere. All right. We're making this long haul. I want to make sure this is right the first time, and nothing bad to say. This yeah, has been a ride. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hey, sorry. They got a big fish on in there. Did they get it? Uh, it's still on. They're fighting it on like four pound tests or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't well. seen what it is yet, but. <laughs> you son of a bitch, you got thrown back out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are headed out? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. Good time. Yeah. yeah. A lot of fish. You guys caught some fish? Oh, yeah. Good yeah, stuff. We caught over 100. Who, who caught the big one yesterday? I did. The you did? Doctor. Cool. A couple of walleye that were about 20 inches, too. Nice. And you caught like 100 fish? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. And then the big lake trout. That's the, the yeah. big lake trout. That's yeah, the one. Nine o'clock at night, too. We weren't even ready for it. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I guess it was 9.15 or whatever you said, right? I'm glad you had a good time. Awesome, guys. Okay, we'll see you later. Drive safe. Yeah. Kurt, 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 game time, game time. Alright, easy. That's a giant. <laughs> support it with your hand at the belly, so look at what you're on that. Right. Oh, wow. Oh, Lord. That's Do a we long want to tape one. It? Hey, you did it. Give me a smile. There you go. <laughs> Alright, Bobber's going down, team. I'm going back to fish. Right. Right. And just kicked off, like. No, bye bye. No business. Here, Jimmy. Bye bye. Cool. Well, I'm going to get out of here. We're gonna go back to fishing. But thanks now. for sharing that yep. with me. Hey, Timmy's, right. Timmy's literally gonna be the face on his new website. <laughs> just... Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah. Okay, right. sounds good, guys. That's pretty cool. So I just had a group check out of this one and I actually have the next group coming in tomorrow. So it's going to get a day break. So after a group leaves, I'm just going to make sure everything that can freeze or break is put somewhere. Like these, these are pretty common. Like if there's water left in this and I don't dump it, that'll break. So that's fine. Turn the battery off, lights off, generator inside. Lock it up. One down, two to go. So with these generators in the winter, I always run either zero weight or five weight. And that's because it's a lot runnier than obviously your heavier weight oils. When it's cold like this, heavier weight oils tend to gum up a lot more, whereas the uh, the lighter ones, they stay liquid rather than uh, turning into goop when it gets really cold and it just helps the generators run a lot better. So I said I need to change the oil. That's a lie. I just need to add some. Every once in a while, these things will go through a little bit of oil and that's one of the biggest hassles is trying to stay on top of that, keep them all added up. I'm just going to top this thing up. So I took the cover plate off unscrewed the oil. I checked it yesterday saying so I know it's right at the bottom of where it needs to be. I don't need to add a whole lot more. But just a just a little top up that should be good. Our plate back on. Now we're back in business. So I'm just about to plow off a lot for an ice castle. We had a lot of really big winds. There was a snowstorm a few days ago. And then after the next couple of days, we had, I don't know, 30, 40 kilometer an hour winds every day. So what happens when that goes down is a lot of the snow drifts, especially in areas that have been plowed off, which is great for me because when I plow an ice road, it usually gets blown in with a lot of drifts. It's a lot of fun. So now what I'm having to do is go back and clear off the whole lot and get it back to the point where it was before it snowed. Um, make it look nice and pretty and uh, easy to drive into. So a lot of people ask me, you know, when I plow a lot like this, it's like plowing an ice road. And I'll show you in the other view of the camera right now of what that looks like. So when I plow an ice road or a lot, I put the castle right in the middle of it and then a lot of people ask me about drilling ice holes on the ice roads and they say well aren't you not supposed to drill a, a hole on a on an ice road and that is true you're not supposed to drill a hole on an ice road never drill a hole on an ice road so when you plow an ice road you have the entire lake is covered in snow right so what you're doing is you're taking that snow and you're pushing it out to the side so now you have an ice road that's like this let's take the banks are right here what ends up happening is the banks weigh a lot more, obviously now, because it's all the snow is packed right into the bank than the center of the road. So what happens is the banks start to weigh down. And what ends up happening is it kind of cracks off right here 
in the middle of the bank. And then when you look at an ice row that's been there for a while, you'll usually notice a big crack right in the middle. What ends up happening is the middle actually pinnacles and you have a crack in the middle. We like to say don't drill within 100 feet of it just because if you do sink that bank and you flood the road, that really, really sucks. So please don't drill in an ice road, especially if you've never been ice fishing or around ice roads before. So drilling a hole around an ice road results in it flooding, which can be very dangerous. And it also sucks for the person that plowed that because now they can't use it anymore. So don't drill holes on the ice road. I do because I know what I'm doing. I know exactly where that pinnacle is gonna be. Uh, I guess if you really had to drill a hole on an ice road, you drill it right in the middle. Um, but don't do that, just let me do it. And that's your ice road science. We got a big drift right here in front of the door. I'm gonna push that over. knows the lake I said <laughs> uh, good he caught it it was a 37 and a quarter yeah like, I had a big head and was long like it wasn't like yeah. wasn't like it looked sick or anything but like it wasn't yeah okay cool talk to you later Bye. Hey, last one. See how nice this looks now? It's like brand new. Put this here. Oh, they left me a note. It says, thank you, we had an amazing experience. We each caught masters and were able to fish in such cold temps with the baby and puppy. We will definitely recommend. I love getting stuff like this. I'm going to keep this one. Yeah, they had their baby with them. Four months old, they said. Hey, well, I got all the, the guests checked out. Castle shut down. Tomorrow I'm going to come out really early, start them back up again. And then we'll get the new, new group of guests coming in uh, tomorrow at 2. So I'm probably going to film that whole process too. And then I'll post that in a, in a few days after this one. So I'm going to go right now, I'm officially off work, and uh, I'm going to go try and catch some perch for a video that I'm going to post uh, next week. So thanks for watching the first episode of The Guide Life, and um, we'll, we'll catch you at the next one. Yeah.